so again, talking about protein, this I just wanted to do a quick little video on protein um, as it relates to nitrogen balance. Um, nitrogen balance, we're going to be looking at a zero nitrogen balance. Um, what that means is we're in equilibrium. Um, we're comparing our intake and output of nitrogen, our nitrogen coming from our proteins, our amino acids, that amine group. So um, nitrogen balance measures equilibrium comparing intake to output. So if we are in a normal state, nothing crazy is going on, we're in equilibrium, zero. So um, you probably won't see that type of person coming into the hospital. Usually we've got something going on if we're in the hospital. For example, a positive nitrogen balance is going to mean that the client or the patient is in a growth, building, or healing phase. So um, some examples of that might be a infant or child, teenager, lots of growth going on there. Um, that's positive nitrogen balance. Pregnancy, another example of growth, um, or even healing. So if you have a patient, maybe they have been suffering from burns and now they're in that phase where they're starting to heal um, and they're needing lots of energy to maybe grow new skin, for example, um, all of those are gonna be examples of our positive nitrogen balance. So for me, that kind of remembers I need positive, I need more protein to help build, create, heal, um, all of these also are kind of a positive trend, if you will. Pregnancy, hopefully, is positive. Um, children, growing, teenagers, healing, we're getting better. Um, so if you can kind of think of it in that way, things are getting better. They're getting more positive, um, and that might help with remembering what examples of nitrogen balance that's positive. Our negative, um, I like to think of shrinking, starving, um, there's a need, and that's negative. So negative nitrogen balance examples might be um, somebody who has inadequate intake. So they might be starving. You maybe have a cancer patient who is um, really just kind of wasting away. Maybe they've got a lot of chemo, radiation, all that kind of stuff, change in taste, and they're not eating very much. Again, that's all inadequate intake or not getting enough food, not getting enough protein or nitrogen. Um, so that's example of our negative. Um, something else to kind of keep in mind is there's something called a net protein utilization. Um, and that's going to measure the amount of protein that's actually used. So we're going to look at nitrogen in minus nitrogen out. And then you divide that by nit nitrogen in to give you a actual number. Um, and that number is basically kind of telling us the protein quality um, and how digestible it is. Um, so the net protein utilization, um, if there's a protein that is entirely digested and absorbed, that um, net protein utilization is going to be very similar to a protein that has, um, or that number, I guess, should be very similar to biological value. Our biological value um, is how easily food or protein specifically can be turned into body tissues. So we talked about protein, one of their functions is for growth um, and synthesis of muscle. So if you have all of those essential amino acids, so we talked about in the last video, we have nine essential amino acids that we have to get from our diet. Um, if we have all nine of those essential amino acids, um, then the food or the protein is said to have a high biological value. Um, so if the amino acid pattern in the food matches the amino acid and pattern in amino acid in the body, then the protein is easily turned into body tissues. And that kind of makes sense, right? So if you're eating something like eggs, meat, or dairy products, all of those are going to have a very high biological value, meaning they have those essential amino acid groups. So that essential amino acid profile is very similar to our amino acids in our body. So it's easier for the body to make it into uh, muscle. So it kind of makes sense. Um, a lot of times you see this biological value when we're looking at um, comparing like animal protein versus plant protein and why we need to um, 
if we are having a plant-based diet, why um, we need to mix and match our uh, proteins to get all those essential amino acids. And again, if we're eating something that's more like us, like an animal, um, then in that amino acid profile is going to be having a higher biological value. So um, the other thing to know about, um, so we talk about net protein utilization, biological value, we have protein digestibility corrected amino acid. So that's the PDCAAS. Um, it's a score that's been given by the World Health Organization um, to determine the protein value. Um, it's looking at amino acid in food being compared against the standard amino acid profile. Um, so the most highly ranked proteins yield all the essential amino acids after digestion. Um, I think I also have in here, and we're talking about that, um, I asked in one of my study guides, uh, you know, what is the difference between biological value, NPU, and the protein digestibility corrective amino acid score? Big picture here. Um, so the score that we were just talking about, that long acronym PDCAAS, the score given after correcting for digestibility estimates the percent of protein in each food category that is actually digested. Um, usually animal has about 97% um, for their score and plants can range anywhere from 70 to 90 depending on what it is. Um, our NPU, our net protein utilization. So again, we're looking at the amount of nitrogen in versus out. Um, so measures the amount of protein actually used. It usually includes the biological value and the digestibility of the protein. Um, so we're looking at the amount of nitrogen intake um, that does not appear in poop. And... Um, it's looking at the ratio of amino acids converted to proteins to the ratio of amino acids supplied. Um, this NPU, the net protein utilization, um, it's also going to be affected by the limiting amino acid in that um, protein. So, for example, soybeans, methionine, that amino acid with the sulfur group, um, is going to be the limiting amino acids in soybeans. So a lot of times if they're feeding, um, you know, maybe cattle or some kind of animal, um, a soybean feed, they'll add in something else to that soybean feed with methionine in it. Um, so they get that complete amino acid profile. Soybeans have a very good amino acid profile, but they do have a limiting amino acid, um, methionine. So kind of how that works. Then our biological value, again, it's looking at the nitrogen balance to see what fraction of the nitrogen is actually retained for growth and maintenance. So for growing and maintaining our muscles, that's what we're looking at the biological value. Um, an example of a protein that has 100% biological value, um, so we talked about like meat, um, animal protein, uh, dairy, all being high biological values, but um, a perfect example of 100% biological value is going to be eggs. So, um, so that means 100% of the nitrogen in that egg is absorbed and retained. Um, for growth and maintenance. So that might be why you see a lot of our bodybuilders, for example, eating a lot of eggs and egg whites and all that kind of